Before we start this episode of Pixar Perspective, we would like to give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the space for squares. That's my joke of the day, and this is Pixar Perspective. <laughs> sponsored by Squaresafe. Hello everybody and welcome to our fifth episode of Pixar Perspective where we Pixar go number five. Number five. I am the wash. I am random bystander here. I am not random bystander here. Then who are you? Uh not you. Great. And this episode we are talking about Finding Nemo 2003. Wow, 2003. Yep. It's weird right. to think people are still looking for him. It's, it's almost been, as of this recording, it's almost been 15 years. It's been more, wow. if it was 2003, it's been more than 15 years. Oh, yes, that's right. It has been, it's yeah. been 16 years. Whoops. Oh, my God. <laughs> Finding Nemo's old enough to drive. I forgot that, that the next movie, Incredibles, is going to be 15 years. So, oh, my boy. God. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, but once we, we get to that, once we get to that, uh, Finding Nemo. Well, yeah, uh, the Nemo of Finding. <laughs> so uh, with each episode, we like we like to start off by talking about what it means for us. I think this one, uh, I mean, this one obviously we, 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 we we'll get to talk about what this means to us. But once I do some research on it, and I just reminded like Finding Nemo was probably the first Pixar film to be like huge. This was a giant blockbuster when it came out in 2003 yes it was ginormous it was like it was everyone everyone was talking about you couldn't go anywhere without hearing people talk about finding nemo it was it was such a craze like it was pretty much pics you go to any you go to any beach you're gonna hear people shouting mine 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 you go to any aquarium you're gonna see people pointing out the clownfish and saying that's nemo even though it's an adult clownfish that's clearly Marlin, you simpleton. <laughs> it was literally this Pixar. It was Pixar's Frozen, almost. Yeah, Probably even. Yeah, 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 that, yeah that, no, absolutely. That's a very good analogy because this this was the biggest animated film. This beat uh, the Lion King at the time. Like this was massive. Yeah, it that's something to say. Yeah, <laughs> the Lion King that's got big, and the Lion King got its own Broadway show. It got its own Broadway show, and then it had its re-release, and that uh, brought it over the top uh, for Finding Nemo. So Disney kind of cheated, <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, I guess we'll, we'll start with you, um, Random. What? Yes. What? Was... Yes, I love I love your history with this movie. It makes me very happy. Yes. Yes. Really? I, yeah. I said this to you a bunch of times. I love your history of this movie. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Because I can't remember really my history much of it. Oh, um, come on! <laughs> I mean, like I know, um, I, I, I like many. I loved the film. I'm pretty sure I saw it in theaters. Pretty sure, and it was, um, it was of course. I really liked it a lot. My oh god! One of my fa- my I was exposed to it so many times throughout middle school, especially because my science teacher was obsessed with this movie. And yes. She literally every time, and I think I think. Wait, I think, are you um, talking about Kirby the same? Bannon, are you talking about the I think same we, one? That, uh, we all went to middle school together, we, so we're we all, all went to middle school teacher. together. I feel we should we should bring this up up front. We all went to middle school. We all know exactly which teacher we're talking about. That would, <laughs> you know that who would you play are. This, she would play this you know. every month. Yes, literally every time. Oh, oh, it's a rainy day. Finding Nemo. Oh, uh, is sick day. Finding Nemo. Oh, it's almost oh, Christmas time. Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. <laughs> exactly. I watched to watch that at least five times in her class, and that I'm pretty sure maybe when we actually looked at the film together later as adults, I said the film was pretty boring, <laughs> and but I blame the teacher for that. You, I, yet, however, last or I think. I think last Father's Day or the Father's Day before, um, I was like, I said, Wash, you told me you were 
watching Finding Nemo on Father's Day, and I thought, you know what? That's a good idea. Let's give it a shot. And I wound up just really liking it, really getting invested in it, and I actually legit cried at the end. And I was, like, bawling at the, like, whole ending part. And it was, ooh. And and honestly, watching it again, it's... Oh, it, it's still an emotional roller coaster ride and an adventure movie. And it's just basically Marlin and Dory and Nemo versus the ocean and the world. <laughs> and I I oh I can literally oh I almost knocked the pop filter. I can basically just like I really like this film. I really, really like it a lot. It's a Pixar classic and technically the start of the Pixar Renaissance for a reason. Although I could say story. I could say it's not maybe it didn't start the Pixar uh, Renaissance, but it definitely is the cream of the one of the creams of the crop of mm-hmm. Pixar films. Yeah, that kind of sums it up because I do remember watching this in the theaters. Uh, this was, I believe, this was the first. Yeah, this was the first uh, Pixar film to come out in the summertime, and it was like perfect timing. Um, yeah, yeah, and and yeah, like since <laughs> you and I went to the same. Uh, 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 class, I w- recall exactly like that. That same teacher is constantly playing uh, Finding Nemo. Like, like while I'm watching it, like part of me just wants to play like Mash in the middle of the movie. Like, which 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 one of my classmates is gonna be in a mansion with me? Oh my god! <laughs> I uh, hope I hope I hope it's us. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm trying to think of anything else though, because that thing is what you said just about covered it. My feelings on it kind of like faltered a little bit as I uh, once I uh, get older and I watch it. It's like okay, there's there's a lot to a whole lot to enjoy, and uh, there's some other parts that are like uh, weak, but we'll we'll discuss that. And, and I I do know that this was uh th- this was like used on on like DVD and such. Weirdly, both the DVD and the Blu-ray have an aquarium mode just for Finding Nemo. Where they it's really do. just the background that's just playing on a loop. It was, it was top notch. <laughs> God, I really can't think of anything else though. Um, Kobe fan, uh, you go ahead, I guess. Okay, Finding Nemo was the first Pixar movie I saw in theaters. I was oh, late wow. to the party. I was late to the party. But I remember wow. Finding Nemo being the first one I went for to, to theaters to see all the others I had first seen on VHS. So I saw it as a kid. I loved it. And then I got into middle school. I won't regurgitate information. However, after that, um, when I saw the movie again, I didn't like it. Not because I knew where it was going. It was- I feel like it was the same issue where I had seen it too many times. But whereas I was saying... Uh, I know you guys are kind of saying, oh, the movie's a little boring now. I was saying, this is a, this is a wild ride of a complaint, so get ready for this one. My big problem with the movie growing up was that you knew nothing bad was going to happen to the main characters, because they're the main characters, but the whole movie is about bad things happening to them and the suspense of whether or not they'll be okay. But because they're the main characters, you knew they'd be okay, so I thought the whole movie was a waste of time. I mean... You're middle... You're, now! You're middle school now! Is weird. But that's yes. the problem with every movie ever. Yes. <laughs> this is not what I think of the movie now. It's going to regurgitate that point. <laughs> but growing up, this is a problem that I specifically had with Finding Nemo. I am going to blame it on the fact that I watched it at least twice a month. <laughs> but if you were to ask me back then, I'd say, no, that's not the reason I thought about this. And this is this is factual. I can tell you why it's not a problem with all the other movies. God, even I though, middle, even though we were such middle right. school reviewer critics. Yeah, yeah. When we're you know we're trying to be uh, contrarians. <laughs> I really hope that teacher isn't listening right now because she's probably bummed <laughs> out that we probably ruined it. That she probably ruined the movie. <laughs> I did wind up watching the movie years later with you two, and I wound up appreciating it more. Mm. Uh, I don't remember if I loved it or not, but I remember liking it a lot more. Yeah, I remember, also I do recall out that, of yeah. everything out of everything that caught me off guard, it was Mike Wazowski in the end credits. I remember, I remember screaming, "Is that Mike Wazowski?" And you were both just kind of sitting there going, "Yeah, yeah." He's always been there. I, I yeah, he's always been. I, but I, really I don't know it. why. I never knew. I never knew when I panicked. I, well, I didn't panic, but I was <laughs> screaming. I was so excited that Mike Wazowski was in the. I don't know why. 
I, I will say when, when I rewatched it uh, last night, I completely forgot about Michael Jackson showing up in the credits. So it was a very pleasant surprise. <laughs> I imagine it was considering that they couldn't do anything like the they, they couldn't do any more of the bloopers. This was a trade off that they decided to go with, and it's a it's a fun little fun little one just to kind of sit yeah. in the theaters and and have a good laugh. And of course the 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 ending uh, the post credit gag um, being just a complete cartoon. Yeah. There's a lot of, oh, a yeah. lot of cartoon uh, logic and cartoon physics in the film, but we can talk about that later. Yeah. And it was just a nice surprise to me because I wound up liking Monsters, Inc. a lot more than I thought I did. So seeing Mike again, was it was nice. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Mike was asking. But Finding Nemo, yes. we can move on now to, as we always start with, the plot summary. Who would like to go over it for this one? Uh, have you done a plot summary, Kobe? There's, there's next time. Don't worry. <laughs> I forgot that the that the next one is like your big one. That's your that, that's my that's my that's my big one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, not, not that it means uh, not I that can... not that it means much because I'm not a movie critic, but it is my favorite movie of all time. So okay, I'll I'll, I'll do a I'll try to do a quick synopsis um, uh, out of character because I do tend to ramble on a bit. Um, <laughs> so Marlin is a clownfish. And his son, Nemo, Nemo was originally one of hundreds of, of eggs, but due to a horrifying um, barracuda attack, Marlin lost both his wife and all but one egg chattered a little bit. And that egg grows up to be Nemo with a little tiny uh, left right fin. And because of this horrible incident, Marlin is now very neurotic. I mean, he was a little neurotic uh, as a as a new father, but after this barracuda attack, he's incredibly protective, and he's not sure about Nemo going to school. Uh, but Nemo really wants to go ahead, and he goes on a on, on his first ever class trip. Uh, Marlin is way too scared about this. Uh, he he discovers uh, Nemo nearby a boat. And he assumes the worst, assumes that Nemo is going to swim after the boat. Nemo, out of anger and spite, swims over to the boat just to make his dad even more uh, upset and just as a, as a comeuppance. But in the, in the wake of that, Nemo gets kidnapped by a human diver and Marlin now has to cross the entire ocean Finding his his little boy, finding Nemo, if you will, oh, with the help eh. of eh, with the help of a oh god oh with the help of a blue surgeon fish. I now remember the name of it, named Dory, who also has short term memory loss. Despite all that, he has to um, go across. He has to fight against sharks. He has to fight against jellyfish. He has to best a horde of turtles. And pelicans, it's fish versus ocean. The movie. I hope. I hope that's as concise as I could make it. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. 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 Fish versus ocean is a very good way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, that pretty much sums up the movie pretty well. Yeah, yes, the they ocean, are scary. The ocean is large. Like, like there's no primary antagonist in it. There's I, no twist villain either. No twist villain, unless yeah, unless it yeah. turns out that the ocean was a good person. <laughs> that would be the twist hero. Oh. Damn it! Ooh. Oh wait, no. You know what? Twist hero would be the sharks, maybe. Definitely. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess since we got onto that topic, we could start with them. <laughs> oh, let's start unless you want to, unless you want to start with Marlin, Nemo, and Dory. Yeah, you probably since, since should. Since we're talking characters, let's start with the the main two. I know a lot of people like ask the question. Um, when who is the main character? Is it Marlin? But why isn't it called Finding Marlin? Because Marlin's trying to find Nemo, and I mean Nemo is a main character, but I don't think he's the fir- he's the main character. He's not you... the protagonist who goes through the transformation. It's Marlin. That that was the most obnoxious way you could have put that. Thank you. Well, I, I mean you're the welcome. question. I mean the question. Your 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 uh your response was great, but the question that was the most obnoxious way you could have said such an obnoxious question. <laughs> So thank yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I like to live up to expectations and more. Um, but, 
But yeah, Marlin is the main character, and you he is definitely the one who grows the most. I mean, Nemo and Dory grow. In fact, I, I kind of argue that Dory grows more in this film than Finding Dory, but that's a long story we'll get to later. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, definitely, um, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, but uh, yeah, Marlin really, really grows a lot because he starts out, like he says, he's very neurotic, he's very cautious, especially, God forbid, what happened to him and his family, and Nemo being the only one he has left, he... He's literally sheltering Nemo to the point where Nemo thinks he can't do anything anymore and actively rebels because of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But when he gets caught, Marlin steps off the plate and conquers his fears to try and save his son. He does things that he literally never said he would do in the the little beginning of the film. Dad, maybe while I'm at school, I'll see a shark. I highly doubt that. Have you ever met a shark? No, and I don't plan to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a whole bunch of those. Um, there's a whole bunch of foreshadowing in the in the beginning yeah. of the film. Just oh yeah, up, there's, just there's top to bottom. Even even in the hey, but, in the prologue, even before the the barracuda attack, there's a there's a there's a great um there's a great line that that I like to I like to note is, is uh, from a coral um Marlin's wife who says there's over four hundred eggs. I know one of them is bound to like you. Which becomes foreshadowing to Nemo eventually saying, "I hate you," which I really yeah. enjoy. I really like that. that yeah, that, that, that's 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 heavy too. Yeah, that's heavy too. There, I really like that bit. Him of just language. saying that in general is really heavy. I feel like a, a good way of talking about Marlin is through Dory because Dory becomes not only a fr- uh, a, a friend but also almost like a surrogate for Nemo, and he he puts out his frustration towards Nemo. Onto Dory, and it's yeah. up to the pivotal moment where he he says to Dory, "You think you can do these things, but you can't, Nemo." He just realizes, like, "Oh my God, I have a problem." And he, yeah, that does make sense. He does take out a lot of stuff on Dory, and he does treat Dory like Nemo. And yeah, it's and a lot of times Dory proves Marlin wrong, and or whether. It, whether she actually suggests something and he doesn't do it and it gets them into trouble, or when she suggests something and it does work out for them, even though all the warning signs go off for Marlin, like with the whale. And, and that becomes uh, especially important because that that trains him to better trust Nemo by the very end of the film. Because yes. he, if he's a protector to a fault, he is... Dory said that one... It's, it's, just, it's almost feels like a throwaway line for Dory, but it has a lot of huge implications. Uh, she says... Well, you can't never let anything happen to him. Then nothing would ever happen to him. Yeah, oh my god, I know. Not much, not much fun for little Harpo. For old Harpo. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a simple but funny running gag <laughs> that she could never remember. Even at the very end, she gets his name wrong. Bye, Elmo. Bye, Elmo. Nemo. 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 <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, okay, let's look, we'll we'll say this fl- uh, right off the bat. Albert Brooks and Ellen DeGeneres are fantastic. They Oh my yes. god, they're so yes. good. Yes. They are so so good. Yes. They uh, uh, also Albert Brooks is can I he's a comedian, right? Oh yeah, he he's a he's a classic comedian. I uh <laughs> he had some But he does some real serious like acting in this. Like Absolutely. holy shit. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Bo- they're both they're both comedians. Um, I, I was reading up on on the on the backstory. Like the towards the end, the um, there's that scene where where a Dory just pouring his heart out, just saying like, "Please don't leave." And when they were, were when they were ready to um to do that scene, um, they they just wanted her to do a trial run because they weren't sure if she was gonna do it. But her trial run was so emotional. They just they just edited it a little bit. And then they just put it in the movie, <laughs> which honestly, yeah, that it, was really good. Yeah, because it really just shows you just how talented uh, Ellen DeGeneres is in this film because she 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 knocked it out of the park. It was Absolutely, fantastic. she's one of the definitely uh, probably. I mean, I don't acting wise, I don't know if she did better than uh, Albert Brooks, but also I don't know if he did as good as she did. It's one of those things where I almost want to say it's a tie. <laughs> it's, it's hard to. They work well with each other. They, they work very yeah, well. Yeah, but even with each even other. even standalone, they're great. Yeah, they don't they yeah. don't need as, as as from the acting point at least. They they didn't need each other to be great. They were both just great. Like Marlon could have very easily just been like like on paper, 
without, especially if you don't see the backstory for it, Marlin could just easily just come out as a huge dick. Yeah. Yes. But Albert Brooks really puts some really put some gravitas on it and really and, and really helps you connect that yes he's yes he's a little bit he's a little bit mean but he's coming from the point of like I've already lost so much I'm about to lose my son I can't let anything distract me and it's like you kind of get it but then you also get that Dory is I mean she's had no one else like she said at the movie at, at the end of the film like no one else had stuck around with with her for as long as he has. And yeah. to think that he was gonna like yeah. leave her right in the middle of the adventure was that was a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to put it as she said it, you make me feel like I'm home and I don't wanna lose that. Yeah. She doesn't want to forget that. that she doesn't want to forget it. <laughs> oh my god. god. That, it, this god. is such an emotional that whole yeah. ending scene though. There yeah. was even we, we, Sorry, there was even uh like it it was it's probably when we introduced uh, to Dory, there's a one lot, there's a, um, she says, I, I suffer from short-term memory loss, and says, no, 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 it runs in my family. Uh, at least I think it does. <laughs> what are they? That's the line that foreshadowed finding Dory. It, oh, well, yeah, of course, but it's also like standalone, that tells you a world of the backstory. Like, it really tells you that this is, this was a fish that's just been floating around. And just yeah, you know, you know, there's a lot of in this movie. It's what I really, I really hate when a movie will just like pummel its message into your head. I and I also really like when a movie will let the atmosphere kind of do everything: the atmosphere, the music, no dialogue, and all that. But it does a really good job. There, there's very good atmosphere and there's very good music uh, on both ends, absolutely. But there's also a lot of the characters gasping for breath being nervous, being afraid, being paranoid, anxious, and you can hear that in a lot of their noises. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning of the movie, uh, when Nemo gets taken away, and the photographer takes the picture, uh, the photographer, wow, scuba diver takes the picture of Marlin, and he's gasping for breath, everything's bright, he can't find Nemo, and all he's doing is gasping, Nemo, Nemo, no, no, no! It doesn't come off... Not to insult the, it, it, Not to insult the movie, but... I remember last time I was complaining in Monsters, Inc. when um, Randall was bringing down the machine and Mike was going, What's that? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh. And it was just way too much. But here, it's it's genuine. It's it's much better done on on top of the already stellar atmosphere and the music. I, I mean, the, in, the case of, in the case of the Mike Wadowski, that was very clearly like him trying to like, like improvise thing? through this. And it was... It, it, it kind of flopped. Not kind of flopped. It... it, it, it it really flopped. Does. It flopped. Um, <laughs> in this case, this was this this was at a pivotal moment of just absolute like fear and chaos, and exactly. all of your anxieties have come true. You've exactly. Lost your but what son. I'm saying, what, what I'm saying, and what I like is yeah. that the movie could have just left it to the atmosphere and the music, and it would have been fantastic. But instead, by having Marlon saying Nemo, no, 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 and have it being done so well, it added more to it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just like in the beginning of the movie when Coral and all the eggs except for Nemo are eaten. And the music and the atmosphere are doing their job great. But you could you could see the pain in Marlon's eyes as he's saying, No, God. Coral? Coral? It's 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 it's, it's very it's sad. S- yeah. So sad. It, it's there, there, are, there are a few parts in this movie where it, it becomes really hard to watch. It's because it's it's Wax you up uh, emotionally. I ha- up to this point for the Pixar perspective, I hadn't cried. I was doing good. I think three instances I lost it for Finding Nemo. Yeah, <laughs> it might be. It might be right. more. Uh, I could think of three off the top of my head, but I've actually thought about it. And I'm sure I could think of I'm more. I'm guessing the the beginning, Dory's monologue, and the ending. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially like these when you um. When when Nemo is on the is on the sand floor and Marlin has a flashback to Nemo with an egg. That, oh god! That really, yes, 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 yes. That was another point I lost it too. That was that was the that's the point where you really hit like Happy Father's Day, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, that's where sees, I got hurt. He sees Nemo on the floor, out of reach, 
and it flashes back to him holding the egg saying, it's okay, I'm here for you, Nemo. You know what's really incredible? All that... What? This movie is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> this is such a funny movie. I was not <laughs> expecting there to be so many funny one-liners. Most of my notes... <laughs> most of my notes are just one-liners, because I was so invested. All I could think to do was, oh, better write that down so I don't forget... <laughs> <laughs> this 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 throwaway line winds up being one of the funniest in the movie. Humans think they own everything. Probably American. <laughs> <laughs> I I I was gonna say the uh the Mr. Way character, the the teacher, uh Nemo teacher. <laughs> When um when Marlin and Nemo are having the fight, and then uh, and then Nemo uh just bl- just blurts out I hate you, and there's just like this uncomfortable silence, and Mister Ray goes, this! nothing to see, <laughs> nothing to see, <laughs> come with me, <laughs> get her over there. That which is so I mean obviously like it's Bob Peterson as the as the voice, but that is so clear clearly a Bob Peterson joke. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, just like off the wall sort, sort of funny stuff, and oh, and uh, oh, since we, you ta- you brought up the sharks, when Bruce uh, smells Dory's blood, <laughs> he's, yes, he's, oh my he's god, like, he's like, ooh, that's good, and good. the other sharks go, intervention, <laughs> intervention. <laughs> uh, well, not one nice little detail I loved about that is like. His eyes like turn like his pupils yeah. get like super dilated. Too. Like, yeah, he becomes, he becomes animalistic. He becomes literally yes, animalistic. Yeah. I know I'm comparing animation from a different company, but it's pretty similar to the same way thing that happens with Zoot- what in Zootopia with like how their eyes become like animalistic and yeah, oh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I know kinda. what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's the same look. Yes. Well, the eyes are the window to the soul, so making them more animalistic uh, helps out. Uh, I mean, they they do a very similar thing with the much later on uh, Pixar with Brave, when the yes, wow, (laughs) oh yeah, yeah, they they do. (laughs) Yeah, it's a very it's a it's a pretty common trope, but um, it they it 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 was used very very well here, and it and even when when Bruce is on this like like homicidal uh, rampage. You you get that he's he's lapsing. He's he's a good guy, really. <laughs> he just Sorry had some control about issues. Bruce Wayne. He's just really <clears throat> a nice guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the idea of sharks just like not uh, like <laughs> not re- fish are friends, re- not food. I love throughout when when he's first introduced. You actually don't know. It, it, it's really heavily implied that there's a second meaning to what he's saying, and that is, you know, to eat the fish. But then it turns out, no, he actually is just a nice shark who wants to improve the image of sharks. Like, he, yeah, he he's, just, te- he's telling them he that it's a party to... because he just wants them to please show up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bruce and the other sharks are great. They're only in like twenty percent of the movie, I think. Yeah, well, not even way less. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're, it's a tiny part of it, but they they have a huge they have a huge uh, blast. Absolutely, with, with that one, especially I, like the one of the one of the sharks, uh, the 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 shark that's not Bruce and not a hammerhead. That shark, I like that he's very clearly not buying this, but he's just along he's just along for the ride. Like he's very clearly he's very clearly like bored. When they're doing the the sharks anonymous uh, bit, like "Hello, Bruce," and, <laughs> and like he's very close. Oh, I seem to have misplaced my uh, friend. <laughs> <laughs> this so, this movie's so quotable. I just realized. Yeah, that. it's yeah. very quotable. It maybe because we are, have it ingrained in our minds from a middle school teacher, but still, <laughs> it's very quotable. I mean, you could say that, but there's also quotes like, "I'm feeling happy." And that's a pretty big deal Indeed. for me. <laughs> you can't say that's not quotable. Or oh, 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 the um, towards the end when uh, when when they finally reach the the dentist office and and, and the um, and and Marlon's like, "Where's Nemo? Where's my son?" And the fish tank gang are, are like, "He's he the, they they got the de- the dentist, dentist got dentist. him." And and Marlon's like, "What's a dentist?" <laughs> Yes, yes. I love that. I mean, he wouldn't know what a dentist is. There's no reason for him to know. <laughs> no reason yeah. for him to know, but, like, everybody else in the room does. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the original subject on characters, I do want to talk about the eponymous character Nemo. Because yeah. 
I really, really enjoyed the performance, and and this is gonna be a super burn to a bunch life. I really. <gasps> oh God! I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I really like that they made Nemo distinctive from Marlin. Nemo yes. is not just a smaller version of Marlin, although they do he is say his own that character. later later on in the movie. He looks just like him, but bigger. <laughs> 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 They gave him a much smaller fin that was a birth defect. And and not only is it like a visual uh, clue as to that Nemo, but also also just like the way he moves. Even when you're not seeing the fin, you can see the way he swims. He swims very lopsidedly because he swims like he has a bad fin. And that's, that's yes. fantastic. And that's, that's on a visual point. Even just talking about... The characters themselves. Nemo starts as somebody who wants to, you know, get out of his house and see the world and all that. But mm-hmm. then once he gets captured, once he gets taken away, he's frightened. He's alone. He doesn't know what to do. He's just a kid. Yeah. Whereas Marlin starts off frightened that something could happen in Nemo, which you're in the ocean. Of course, anything can happen in Nemo. And when Nemo gets taken away, even though he's frightened, even though he's a kind of a mess, he... He takes the initiative to go find his son. It's almost like they switch positions. They both grow. They both go to get over their own fears because Nemo has has to conquer his fears of escaping, of trying to escape the fish tank, and they they have a, like a near death experience there. The and ocean is a scary place, and so are fish tanks. Speaking of the fish tank, uh, I'm not a fan of the fish tank gang. No, I, they they were. They were slightly more tolerable than I'm used to them being, but no. Yeah. Making another I mean, uh, Bugs Life parallel, I mean, they were too similar to the circus bugs. They were they were I like, note I characters. Like, I like Gil. He's he's more essential to the plot though. Like it could have just been Nemo and Gil, and it would have been fine. Yeah, yeah the fish tank was really it. just there for comedic relief, and that was it. They didn't really serve a purpose yeah. otherwise. And and, and the, most of the jokes didn't really land for me. I didn't find them that. I didn't find him that funny. I, did, I I thought they were they were too one note. But luckily, um, they were the B plot, so we didn't have to. Yeah, they worry weren't even focused on them. all that much. It really was for the most part. Nemo and Gil. Gil was okay. Gil was okay enough. I thought. And then the other ones. Uh, there's one that's kind of ditzy. There's one that's that's a neat freak. There's one that's really like bubbles. Um, I can I like Nemo a lot. <laughs> uh, maybe yes, not maybe yes. not the rest of the fish tank but a lot of the stuff that happened with Nemo in the fish tank I thought was really good oh yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it becomes his own it, it almost becomes like a miniature version of Marlin's quest through the through the yeah ocean. exactly I love the part Pretty I much. love the part when Nigel comes in and he's telling Nemo about all the adventures his dad is going on to get him and he's just listening to him with this huge smile on his face that his dad is going through all those links for him and then really immediately nice. after he heard that story, he has she suddenly has the gumption to clog up the fish tank. The, the, fil- the filter. The filter, yes. thank you. He has enough <laughs> gumption to I've worked at a pet store for five years, I know what a filter is. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. We'll, we'll leave it to the expert on this. Oh my god, all the people who wanted to call their fish Nemo. Every time I someone buys a fish, they're like, let's name him Nemo. What about this one? Dory! What about this one? I don't remember. <laughs> Poor Marlin. You know why? You know why? It's because Marlin is a clownfish and he's not very funny. <laughs> you know for a clown, you know for a clownfish that, that guy really isn't that funny. I love how he's just explaining the joke and I'm like, this is me when I try and tell jokes. <laughs> it, it, it was very clear. We've all like been we've Albert all been Marlin Brooks. once. It was very clearly Albert Brooks channeling being a bad stand-up comedian. <laughs> the guy who yeah, can't I tell just, a good joke at a party. <laughs> I just I just really like the running gag of you know for a clownfish the guy's really not that funny. Since you mentioned the the fish tank, uh, I'm gonna, because I I going pretty uh, into the research this time and I I found out that this movie was actually like very bad for the environment because the, yeah. weirdly weirdly a movie about a father being horribly uh, separated from his son made people want to say I want that clownfish. I want that for myself. Yeah. There, are, there are all sorts of uh, old articles from from uh, from back of the day, especially around Australia, 
of like aquarium companies harvesting clownfish from their coral habitats or going to breeders to make more and then the kids either get bored or the fish get sick so they release it back to the ocean and then it either dies immediately because it's not the right uh, climate for it or it ends up being an invasive species <laughs> who eat away while not having any local predators. So this movie was bad news bears. It was uh, very bad for the environment. <laughs> yeah. It's quite, quite uncomfortable to, uh, to go through and realize like, wow, people got the absolute worst idea from this movie. Which is odd. But I think all people just saw was like, that, that's a pretty fish. I want it. It's so strange. <laughs> How do you- so on the topic of kids, when uh, they are going through the East Australian current with the turtles. Yes. The turtles, the kid turtles, their faces look like the bugs from A Bug's Life. <laughs> are you saying that the, that the turtles look exactly like Munch from Oddworld? Yes. Odd play Oddworld. <laughs> Everyone listening to the podcast, play Oddworld. It's great. <laughs> I love when Dory is introduced. I mean, we, we know better because we've seen it so many times. But when Dory is first introduced, she seems like she's just going to be the quirk, like textbook definition of quirky side character. And that's all she would ever yeah. amount to. And so much more. Oh, she amounts so to more so that. much more. If Dory wasn't around, Marlon would not be able to make it. No. Honestly, yeah. But also, also, if Marlon wasn't around, Dory wouldn't have the confidence to, to, to go anywhere. And, and you know what? Like, I mean, obviously, because they're, they're different species, this would never happen. But isn't it so nice to have a male character and a female character and they remain platonic the entire yes. movie through? Absolutely. Yes. Like, absolutely. And they in are, the sequel, they are, and in the sequel too. They right are now. very close friends, and that is it. I, I mean, obviously, because they're different species, so it wouldn't goddamn work. But thank <laughs> that, that, that they, they, did, st- they did the Zootopia loophole. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna bring up Zootopia. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> On the topic of you know one being male, one being female, the one joke in the well, the one joke in <laughs> I the know movie. What you're gonna fr- say. Go ahead. <laughs> the one joke in the movie from Marlon and Dory that I thought was gonna fall flat was when Dory is about to ask the whale for directions. Marlon says no. Dory says, what is it with men and asking for directions? I groaned. But then Marlon said, don't play the gender card. Let's play the not die card. (laughs) (laughs) Another thing, he wasn't even objecting to asking for directions. Directions, He was originally just objecting to, there's no fish around here. There's nobody to ask for directions. And then they see a single fish. And obviously, like, considering the barracuda and everything, Marlon is... Scared out of his wits. He is not sure about any of this. But Dory eventually gets Marlon to trust. And then they get they get swallowed by the whale. Marlon loses that Pinocchio trust. Pinocchio style. Marlon loses that trust. She's like he is furious at Dory. And then the I mean the the rest of that whole whale scene is just such a great it's such a great like pivotal moment. Of, yes, of, absolutely. For- for, for Marlon, absolutely. That's when it really, really all comes together. and they, they Marlon, Marlon has a lot of moments like that, but yeah. none of them, it doesn't feel like he has too many. No, no. Although it did he, feel like he had a little too many of passing out and then waking up. That did happen a few times. There was the Barracuda. <laughs> there was the... the, the it, this doesn't, this kind of doesn't really count, but it was like um, uh, they're going up to the with the sharks. And then, yeah, because uh, he was covering his eyes during that. He was covering that. his eyes for that. And then there was the angler fish. He's like, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. And then there was the turtle. The turtles. He, he passed. That was, that was, he it was just after the jellyfish. That one, that one we, we, we visually saw and it made sense. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it was a lot of near-death experiences. How about, how about the jellyfish? How about that part? That looked so good. Yeah, so it many, did. so many bright welcoming looking colors in such a dangerous almost causing of death to seem i know this is a weird point to bring up the finding nemo video game <laughs> the only level i remember is the jellyfish level where you had to basically jump on the tops of jellyfish in order to the like 
make it through the level. And I don't know why I still remember that, but that made me think of the video game. Mostly because every time you die, you know how that scene where uh, Dory gets tangled by the jellyfish, like, uh, tentacles? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, the game over is every time... You know, you you get to, you hit the wrong thing. It shows Marla and Dory stuck in the tentacles, like dying, and then it just cuts back to the the last part of the game. <laughs> well, yikes! That's a big yikes. Okay, real quick tangent about that video game. That video game was developed by Traveler's Tales. Um, yeah, no. Who also yeah. made? They also made um, Wrath of Cortex. They made Sonic R, and they made the Fantastic Quest to Insanity. Um, and now they only make Lego movies. Like, literally the last decade, that's all they've ever done, is make Lego movies. Tangent over. Anywho, that, that scene was like... Yeah, definitely. It, it, that, that, that scene was fun, but also so suspenseful and terrible. Yeah, I know, it, start, it started unsettling with Marlin not be, uh, being afraid of the jellyfish. And then, as Dory kind of made it more fun, Marlin got into the fun too. But then, it stopped being fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it stops. You, you, then, see, you see, you see Marlin get out, and then you see Dory's gone, and literally, uh, the, it, Marlin's reaction is our reaction. Oh no! <laughs> yep, <laughs> literally. Yeah. yeah okay. And then you just see her, and you just see Dory, Dory caught in like the tentacles, and he just tries rips her out, and they just try and escape. It's just, yeah. it's just so, ter- it's yeah. terrifying. It's, uh, yeah. The no, ocean another, is another, terrifying. Another point of the movie where the music just knocked it out of the park. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The uh, Thomas Newman did the score for this one, and uh, he did a really uh, did a real good job, and and strays a little bit from Randy's from his cousin Randy's little like like all those little like trills that he likes to put into the the soundtrack. No um, yeah. Randy Newman songs. <laughs> Finally, we are free. Little, little fish. fish. Holy swam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think we have uh, really talked about this, but uh, um, the the scene with the anglerfish. That was incredible. Yeah. it's, it's That's one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. It's straight up dark for a good, like, minute, I think. Yeah. No, a lot, a lot of it is pitch black. Oh, or yeah. at, the very le- at the very least, it's... It, it, it's mostly pitch black with just a single source of light. And that's how you have to kind of yeah, like Marlin pitch- and kind of like Marlin and Dory. You have to use those few seconds of light to kind of understand what's going on. But you gotta be quick because this light doesn't last forever, but it's also really funny. Ah, something's got me. That was me. I'm sorry. <gasps> Who's that? Who's that? Who could it be? It's me. Are, are you my conscience? Yeah. 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 I'm your conscience. We haven't spoken for a while. How are you? Mm, can't complain. Yeah, good. Now, Dory, I want you to tell me. Do you see anything? I see a... I see a light. A light? Yeah, over there. Hey, Conscience, am I dead? <laughs> no, no, I see it too. <laughs> and then he's just, like, using the light for Dory to try and read. Yeah, I love that. Struggles. When he swallows it's the called... light and she says, I need light, and the light turns on light, inside. Light, please. Light, please. Thank you. <laughs> I remember at the time, uh, well, it's it's not at the time, but um, the very next year, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie came out, and that also had an anglerfish. <laughs> and I remember thinking at the time, is this going to be the new craze in Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> That's so you. That's such a you, uh, past you thing to say. <laughs> anglerfish is everywhere. <laughs> It was in Finding Nemo. It was in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. It was in Banjo Tooie. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, man, oh, was it in oh, Banjo Tooie? I didn't even know that. It, yes. There was an anglerfish boss yes. in Banjo Tooie. A game I've never played, but, but I just know the bosses. <laughs> One thing that we haven't talked about was um, just how beautiful and detailed, like everything in the background is. I really wish I had the Blu-ray copy of this because it is so gorgeous. It it really doesn't get as well i mean we'll see later on but i don't think it really gets as as visually stunning uh as this movie until maybe up it definitely it definitely doesn't get this open i mean cause it's, just it's, imagine just how much of a nightmare this must have been at the time where oh, they're, yeah. they're very barely they're barely trying to get like 
surface of the water or like like water on fur and things like that and now everything is water (laughs) (laughs) and i suddenly have to try to uh, work through that and try to figure out how to make like particles float through the water um every single um every single anime was required to go scuba diving right uh, I, I know that, like, all of the principal crew, uh, film crew, uh, were supposed to. I think most of the, like, most of the animators, uh, had to do scuba diving, uh, to get a sense of what it's, what it's like in the, in the water. It, it's a very agoraphobic movie, almost, in how agoraphobia being the opposite of claustrophobia. It's like a fear of large spaces. Mm. There's just so much, and Marlon and Dory and so much of the movie are just these tiny little specks. Yeah, there, there's, there's like... really there's... goes to show, the ocean, the ocean is huge. Anything like, can like happen. The, the build up to the whale, like like yes. so, for so long, it's they're the only two fish in visible range. Yes, it's, yeah. They're just going through a fog, and all they see is this is this one fish in the distance that turns out to be a whale. Oh, and you know what? That whale leads to. <laughs> I I really wouldn't think that this works as well as it does. But it leads to Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> trying to speak whale. Whale, yes. <laughs> so, 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 okay, that's really funny. But what I loved was Marlon trying to convince her that she's not speaking whale. Because it's not that he's just saying you're not speaking whale. He's saying things like, you know, uh, does that sound like whale? That doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard before. You're not speaking whale. <laughs> No, no, he, he's speaking he, upset he, he, stomach. Yeah, it sounds like an upset stomach. Does that sound like a little awkward? It sounds like an upset stomach. He's trying. She's trying like different dialects. Yeah. Let me try see, humpback. Don't, see, don't try humpback. <laughs> <laughs> see, look, see, look. He ran away. You offended him. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's okay. Know, well, only eat krill. Hey, look, krill. <laughs> you know what i wish i was just watching the recording booth of ellen degeneres just doing those whale noises i love when she's repeating uh p sherman 42 wallaby way sydney to herself because she's so excited that she can remember it but the more that she says it the more that she has to convince this other person that she's talking to that she keeps saying it like you'll hear her say all right <laughs> i'll say it again i don't know why i keep having to tell you but it's it's she, it, it plays with the comedic effect but once she reads Sydney on there, like like when she meets Nemo, she's like, "Oh, that's nice." Yes. And doesn't remember him. It yeah. comes back later when she just reads Sydney, and then the whole flashback comes in. Yep, of yep, everything. yep. The, the movie, remembers. the movie comes back so, to her. It's so great. It's such a great yes. moment. Yes, Dory's such a great character. I love Dory. Yeah, it's. Is that why you were so pissed off during Finding Dory? Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. That's a that's a motto. Oh, you know what? Okay, speaking of, we'll get to that. I'm gonna make a parallel because we have to keep mentioning the uh, this movie. Um, the mood shift uh, in the in the opening scene where the uh, Marlin is tickling um, his wife's coral, and you can see that they're having a little, a little fun, and then it suddenly the 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 barracuda in the in the distance that mood shift. Works so much better than a good dinosaur. <laughs> I just, I just have to because we have to fill our quota. Yeah. One good dinosaur reference per episode. Trust me, the hype is worth it. <laughs> yes, it does. And you know what? I'm not sure why. I think just because the buildup is there, like in between. And that it happens so quick. Yeah, like, it's, it's very it. sudden. Uh, and I don't want to spoil too much about Good Dinosaur. But the, what's great here is that other than, uh, you know, it becoming completely silent, you know, it's still the same. though. The weather's the same. The location's the same. The, the characters are pretty much the same. You know, their personality doesn't go through any radical uh, And the changes. movie just started. It's We're literally like three minutes in when it starts, maybe. It, it doesn't feel out of place because everything still feels as it should. It's just very yeah. unsettling because it's very different. I'm trying to think like what else there is. There. Um, I, I have this one note here that just says Shark Tale is a terrible movie. <laughs> Honestly, no, this is a movie that had to take place in the ocean. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think It's I think not Shark the, Tale. I, I was going to say like, like that might uh, need its own like podcast episode somewhere else. 
But honestly, that's that sums it all up. Like Shark Tale is just a a mobster screenplay that they fit the ocean onto, and it ends up making because of Finding Nemo, and it ends up making like a lot of the a lot of stuff like the sharks and the fit like the relationship between fish and sharks like not work. You really can't have like a human analogy to Finding Nemo because it, it really just becomes a fisher's quest through nature, and it works. So oh, wow, God, it's really hard for me to. It's, it's just. So, it, uh, so if, if I had to describe why it's such a good movie, I really just think that you know it. It will. It it's such an emotional roller coaster, but you'll be laughing almost the entire way. Yeah. And those those that's those two put together are the best combination a movie could really ask for. I think. Yeah. At yeah, the very absolutely. least, a movie like this. I know it's an adventure movie, and a lot of movies kind of go to the adventure movie style. But what's so great about this is that they never they never spend a long time anywhere. Yeah, I would have loved to see more of the sharks. Yeah, I would have loved to see more of the turtles. Yeah, I would have loved to see more of Nigel. But they they're so rarely are sticking in one place because what Marlin is doing is urgent. Yeah, he, he's constantly moving. Yeah, he can't just hang around with the turtles. He can't just be with Nigel because there's something urgent. And even at the end when he thinks when he thinks he's lost Nemo. At that point, he's not going to want to be with anybody. He's going to want to be alone. He tells, when Dory says she doesn't want to forget, Marlon says, I do, because he's so defeated about it. God, so at yeah. that point, at that point, when he stops, when he finally gets the chance to stop, there's no more adventure left. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so well, it's so well paced. It's really, it's really, really does a fantastic job. Can you believe that the then CEO of Disney, Michael Eisner, Thought that this was going to be Pixar's first flop. <laughs> there yes, was, he oh, did. He yes, he wrong. did. He was, he was very wrong, in fact. At the time, they didn't have Albert Brooks cast as Marlon. They had William H. Macy, who who the hell is that? Uh, he's <laughs> from he's from like Fargo. He's from uh, he's from a show called I can't remember the show. It's like it's on Showtime. He's very good. It's just that he wasn't. I don't really see him like fitting well for the part. And Michael Eisner didn't see it either and thought that he, he said to the board of directors, like, he, he thought this was like Pixar was finally going to learn their lesson or something like that. He was really mean to Pixar. And then it became yeah, yes, like was. the biggest movie. And then the, the contrast with Pixar was running out soon. And Michael Eisner just really fucked it up. And part of that is why they fired him. So goodbye, Michael Eisner. <laughs> Good riddance. Yeah. Good riddance. When Monsters, Inc., the part that I thought was so funny when Mike goes, ah, day, there was something like that in this movie. <laughs> it was, it was, there was much more of a reason for me to think it was as funny as I did, but it was still really out of nowhere. It's during that montage of sorts when all the fish are telling other fish about Marlin's adventures. The one fish is telling the story to another one, and it's this kind of big looking fish. And then the fish says, golly, that's amazing. <laughs> And I lost it. I lost it. I, I had to pause it. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I, I I just loved how weird the voice sounded. It was I, really funny. My uh, equivalent to the ah, yeah, yeah, scene was uh, toward the end when you see those two crabs that are feeding off the bubbles from the from the sewage pipe. <laughs> and, yeah. and then the um, uh, Nemo pops out. And and then he he runs away. One of the the, the crowd is like, you made you you made him run away. And like hey hey. And then and then one of them shoves the other, and they just like float slowly to the bottom. <laughs> For some reason, that's like always like stuck with me. It's like really goddamn funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, this game knows how to like make us laugh and make us cry. I mean, yeah. this game, this movie, <laughs> this game. Yeah, no, definitely, it's. Like I said, it's such a when I say it's a roller coaster of emotions, you know, the 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 the, the feeling that it gives when you're laughing like that. That's an emotion too. Do you have any like negatives besides? Yeah, what are your talk? negatives? Because my main negative was the fish tank. Uh, I thought yeah. I thought some of the kids were a little annoying too, but not Nemo. A- any issue I had yeah, with the I mean... any issue I had with the other kids in the school didn't matter because Nemo was just so well portrayed, so well acted, so well written, all that good stuff. And plus, the kids showed up for, like, 
three minutes. Like, minutes. They were exactly. Yeah. Long. Exactly. The the fish tank is a is a little bit larger of an issue because they kind of they they're going through pretty much the the entire rest of the film, um, and they just kind of like. Oh, I thought of something that made me laugh. Oh, um, go for that, it. I don't know why. Um, the, the some of the interactions with the dentist. Like when Nigel hits the screen and he goes "What the?" and pulls the tooth out. <laughs> that just made oh, me at laugh. least I got the right one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I don't know why they did, but just those interactions. Also, the psycho reference. Oh yeah, yeah he is. Uh, there's a there's a psycho reference. Here's Boo. There's, there's a, uh, an, oh, there's a psycho reference of the um, of Darla coming through the door and uh, uh, earlier in Darla. the film. There's a shining reference with the uh, with uh, Bruce. Both Here's Bruce. Here's Bruce. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, uh, the Shining is also Leon Quitch's favorite film, so obviously he had to throw that in. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this: oh, hey, Darla, uh, your, your 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 uncle will see you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this as a sort of negative. Um, I thought the dentist looked okay, but I thought all the other humans still looked really off. They they looked too bland. I they, 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 they think they look good. They were closer to making them appealing, but they also just made them look not very memorable. I I don't think they were particularly good. Looking. The only memorable one was Darla, and well, that that's, that's because she's... of what was on Darla. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Post the picture that I put on the Discord of Marlin and Dory with those giant eyes. <laughs> oh my god. It's a really funny picture and I want everyone to see it. It's a lot of cartoony. It's a very, yeah, it's very I was, was going to say, you it. very casually and quickly brought this up at the beginning. A lot of cartoony physics in this movie. Yeah, especially uh, when, when they get spit out, spat out by the um, when they get spat out by the whale and they, they're like, oh, and then they freeze in the air and they look down and then they fall. That's like wily coyotes. <laughs> yes. And then and then the post credit scene where you have this one tiny little uh, timid fish that showed up very briefly during the during the, the shark scene and uh, right behind is the angler fish, like right about the bite, and then the, the tiny fish gulps <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the fish. That was, was that was that was right. classic cartoon humor at its finest. That was yeah, good. Yeah. I really hope Mike Wazowski is okay. Yeah, I hope I hope the fish didn't eat Mike Wazowski. <laughs> yeah. As I was doing research, I was also going to uh, IMDb and checking through the facts, which are often just like BS. And this one fact that I decided to write down just because of how weird it was, was cool, Marlon's wife, is the first female Pixar character to die. What, <laughs> what a distinct honor. <laughs> Especially it's like... It's like, I'm reading that, it's like, were there any others? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, it's such a strange line. They just decided to throw in whatever fact they wanted. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll, so we'll on, on, the note of, on the note of women dying, final thoughts? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Randall, you start. <laughs> oh. Oh, I oh, my God. Coral. <laughs> what oh, my God. Did you fall down? Was it the... D- <laughs> Sorry, that's just I that just placed be, my phone on the desk. That shouldn't be funny. I shouldn't be laughing okay, at the you fall to, down. You have, to, you have to cut all that out. I though. literally put my phone on the desk. Um, Coral. Um, Rando, uh, why don't you start? I really like Finding Nemo. I, I, it's it's a it's a staple Pixar movie for a reason. It's one of the most popular animated movies ever made for a reason. It's such a great story with a mix of laughs and dramatic things and fun and suspense and terror. And and this movie in general is just a wild adventure of fish versus the ocean that they live in. And it's crazy and it's insane and it's just grand. And I love it. It's pretty high up there on the list. Mm-hmm. Well, how about you, The Wash? Well, I, The Wash... Loved this film. I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I was expecting it to, actually, which I barely even uh, brought up, um, <laughs> because it really did such a such a great job, especially from a from a screenwriting standpoint. Like the director Andrew Stanton, he's 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 becoming more and more interested in screenwriting, and this is where you can really tell that this was his. This was when he was really starting to get it, uh, especially the the main characters, Marlon and Dory. 
work so well off each other and they work so well on their own. They have a lot of great comedy. They have a lot of great pathos, which is so hard to do when you're trying to just be a wacky sidekick. It did a really great job. Um, uh, the, the, I'm probably on your, I'm really trying to think of any, any other negatives beyond the, um, beyond the fish tank gang. Cause it really just does such a, such a good job. Um, whew, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, Kobe fan, what would your final thoughts? I didn't introduce myself this time. So yes, I am Kirby Fan. If the audience watching didn't know, uh, yes, you are. <laughs> yes, I am. But my you final are. thoughts on the movie, I gotta echo what you two said. I adore it. Even though I grew an appreciation for it before by watching it again and realizing, oh, this movie isn't about boring or no stakes or whatever it was that I was talking about before. It's just a solid movie. That was. When I watched it before, now I, I loved it. I adore the movie. It's fantastic. There's so much to love about it. There's so little not to love about it. And it's just so well-rounded. It is really great. It's got a lot of what I like about story and stuff in it. It looks really good. It's unique. Even now, it's. I'm not going to say... You know, it's impossible to replicate Finding Nemo. I'm not going to say that it will never be replicated, or even that it hasn't been replicated, but there's still no movie quite like Finding Nemo, which is so weird because it was such a big movie. You think eventually somebody would get a movie like it, but there's still nothing quite like Finding Nemo, and yeah, I like, like that. Even the even the, the DreamWorks parallel is so clearly not Finding Nemo. <laughs> oh, it is so, so not Finding Nemo. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess this is now the time where we have to do our uh, rankings of the films yes. we've watched so far. So, yes, I, I, uh, did, I, did, I did this already. I know where I'm going to put it, so it's very little thought. Although, it shouldn't be a surprise how I would rate it compared to A Bug's Life. I, I, I don't want to have to uh, act this for the both of you because I think we know. Uh, is this better than A Bug's Life? Yes. I'm not going to scream yes ten times this time. However, <laughs> yes. Okay, moving up the ladder, is this better than Toy Story 2? Um, yes. Just FYI, I actually have Monsters, Inc. at this point, but yes. Okay, okay, so it's better, it's definitely better than um, Toy Story 2. Now, is this better than Monsters, Incorporated? Random. Well, yes, random, you, you go first. Yes. Okay. And this is where I have Toy Story 2, and I still say yes. Okay. Um, what about what about what about you? I might have to put it in a, as a tie almost because there's when I first put, I put this in it was it was uh, Monsters Inc. and then uh, uh, Finding Nemo and un- underneath, but it's they really are it's like so close together, like they're they're both like fantastic um, buddy comedies with great pathos. Um, ah, it's a it's a toughie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be the the cheating bastard, and uh, declare the tie between the two because they they both work just so well. I I, I feel it. I do own sort of movies. Um, so is it is it above Toy Story one or below? <sighs> I I I I really want to just say tie. Uh, <laughs> a three-way tie. It's a three-way tie. You can you could say that for now. It, w- w- the final video that we do for the for the podcast, where we actually just go over our rankings with each other, that's when it's going to matter. Yeah. So if you just yeah. want to say tie for now, I, I can respect that. Well, yeah, and, and plus it's like like you two both said that it's it's better than um than Master Drink, so it's I'm 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 overruled essentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, like even like an averaging out, like it's still better. <laughs> it's it's still ranking up higher than. You didn't than ask me. You didn't ask me though if I thought it was better than Toy Story. Yeah, uh, yeah, you I haven't asked us that question say. yet. I thought you did say. No, neither of I us did. I said Toy Story. Yeah, we didn't ask you. Said Toy Story two. Yeah, Toy Story two. That's what I said. No, I yeah, mean but, Toy Story. Yeah, Toy Story one. You haven't asked either of us. We liked it more than Toy Story one. You just oh, okay. Assumed. Well, all right then. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Kirby, is this better than Toy Story? 
Suspense. Drum roll. Yes. Wow. I oh. liked it more. I like it more than I like Toy Story. I, oh, I was shit. so surprised with how easy of a choice this was. Wow. I did not have to think twice on this. I asked myself the question. It was immediate yes. And the more I thought about it to maybe try to give Toy Story an upper hand, the more I realized it was Finding Nemo. Uh, it's, it's not going to be number one for long, but it took the spot. Damn. Okay. So we'll give it over to you, Random. Is this better than Toy Story? Fuck. Um. Hmm. Fuck it. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna change my. I'm gonna change my ranking already. I'm gonna put this uh, Finding Nemo above uh, Monsters Inc. because uh, Finding Nemo succeeds extremely well in atmosphere. It's it's like it's atmosphere in story, atmosphere in characters, atmosphere in visuals, atmosphere in sound. It it works so well homogeneously. Um, like the the main the main complaint I have of, of Finding Nemo is the uh, the fish tank. Uh, the main complaint I have about Master Zink is Randall, and Randall is honestly a a a bigger shot in the foot. Than the fish tank, so I may have to just uh, put it uh, put it up uh, above. I don't think that this is. I don't think this is better than your story. But at your this point, I'm like already it. overruled anyway. <laughs> so this is quite interesting, uh, and I have a feeling <laughs> that this is. I have a feeling we're gonna need to get some a, a little more systemic, perhaps, once we get to the uh, to the next episode. Um, but for now, okay, I can't. I can barely hold this in anymore. I am so excited for next episode. <laughs> but for you, now, you don't know. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> for now, the uh, the ranking is averaging from the bottom up. A Buzz Life. Yes. Then Toy Story Two. Then, Master Zink. Then, Toy Story. And at number one is Finding Nemo. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So already we've had uh, quite a major shift in the ranking. And I thought I th- I I thought The Incredibles was gonna be the one that shifted it. Honestly, I really did. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. That's a fair point. I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm happy Finding Nemo was the one, but also I would have been My number really happy. Coco, so I didn't expect Toy Story to change for quite a while. Same. But, ooh. I would have been really happy if Incredibles is the one that did it, but I'm very happy with Finding Nemo. Uh, you know what? Up could easily do it, too. Cause... Well, yeah, but I just didn't think it would be... I thought, like I said, I thought The Incredibles would be the one. I did not think Finding Nemo was going to be the one. Yeah, Up is, up is, I... is like 10 movies in? Yeah. Like we got, yeah, if, we got if a up was the if there. up was the one, if up was the one, then shout outs to Toy Story for just having that grip for so long. <laughs> Finding Nemo, fifth movie already. Yeah, and I, even as it, even as is Monsters Inc came close to topping it from what I remember. So, Toy Story isn't the only good Pixar movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for listening to this uh to this podcast. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. it. Hope you enjoyed us. Talking about the stuff for a while. About finding me. Yes, and remember, please support our sponsor, Squarespace. The space. The space. Wait, I've. Thank you for watching this. Square, you nink. Thank you for watching. Space is square, you nincompoop. Thank you very much for listening to this. Be sure to like and subscribe. I be sure. Be sure to find that like button. Find that like button, and I heard something about a bell. I don't know what it does, but I've heard you have to use it. I am be sure, when you're done watching this episode, be sure to say, Golly, that's amazing, and subscribe. <laughs> I am the wash. And I'm a random bystander here who's still annoyed at my middle school teacher. Spoilers. You know who you are. Spoilers. It's Kirby fan. <gasps> you were my teacher? Have a great day. 
<laughs> he slammed it again. <laughs> you fell again. <laughs> no, it was the phone. I'm stopping. <laughs> <laughs>